Well, hi, I'm Dr. Lopez, and I'm here at Cavazos Elementary. Good morning, Cavazos Elementary. Good morning, Dr. Lopez. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I want to say a good morning to the, or it's going to be a good afternoon when you see this, to the rest of the district and the elementary students all across Mission CISD. We have 14 elementary schools watching this today. Well, today I'm going to do a read aloud. And in the read aloud, I'm going to be reading a book to you, but I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do something called also a think aloud. Because what happens is when we're reading, sometimes we struggle when we read and we go, what do we do when I forget something or I can't pronounce something? Because, you know, I shared this secret with Cavazos Elementary, but our teachers love to give us books. And doesn't it seem, students, every time you get a book and you're finished reading it and you're like, finally, I get a book I can read, they give you a harder book to read, right? I know, huh? And they give you another heart and you're like, oh my gosh, here I go struggling again. That is normal. We're challenging you. So you're always going to be a struggling reader, no matter what level book you get. And so I'm going to do a few tips that helped me as a kid. It might not help you, but then whenever you're struggling, go, hmm. I want to practice what helped Dr. Lopez, and maybe it will help me too. Now, we got an awesome book today. This book really relates to me. Um, I know a lot of us have read the Franklin stories. And this Franklin story related to me, I think it relates to, to my daughter. Um, and you'll see why, both of my daughters. And, and you're, you're going to see how it's going to relate to some of you. My question to Cavazos Elementary and the rest of the kids of Mission CISD, I want you to raise your hand. If, you're, if you are new to the elementary school that you're at, if you're new to the elementary school you're at, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've attended more than one elementary school. Raise your hand. Okay. So this book is going to be really relating to making new friends, how sometimes people feel when they go to a new school. When I was little, my dad was in the military, and we would move from school to school to school. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So your mom moved a lot too, you see? And so it's normal. This book relates to everybody. And who knows, maybe one day you'll move to a new school too. So I'm going to read this, this book, and it's called Frank, Franklin's New Friend. And we know a lot of good things about Franklin. We know Franklin's a cool turtle. We know Franklin is friendly. So when we get these books, we already have an idea of the characters that are already in the book. If you haven't read a Franklin book, I suggest you pick it up because all of his books are really, really fun. Would you not agree? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to read Franklin's New Friend. And remember, I'm going to be thinking aloud as I'm reading. Okay, so when I read... There's certain things I'm going to say to myself. I'm going to say, wow, this, or, oh, man, this looks like it's going to be hard to read. I might even forget what I just read. Believe that? How many forget after they read something that, what did I just read, right? So we're going to learn tips and tricks on how to overcome that. So we're going to start right here. And we got the setting. And if we look at the setting, we notice it's a forest. We have some different type of animals there. And so I always look at the pictures first. So I always look at the pictures and say, what does the picture tell me? See, I don't try to read a book fast. I try to enjoy the book. So when I'm reading, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say, wow, I see a fox hiding. I see Franklin like he's counting on a tree. It looks like they're playing hide and seek. I see a beaver and a bear playing marbles with a snail. I see a rabbit in the water, talking to a swan, and I see some baseball equipment laying around. It looks like it's a fun time. Let's see what it has to say now. Franklin has always lived in the same house in the same town. Hmm. They're telling me the setting of the story. Franklin's town and house. I got to remember that. He had grown up with his friends, and each one had a special place in Franklin's life. When Franklin wanted to play hide-and-seek, he called Fox. Oh, I see that. He's counting, and Fox is hiding. That makes sense. 
If Franklin needed a best friend, he called Bear. I see Bear there, but I guess if he needed a best friend, what do best friends do? They listen, they give advice, right? So, okay, that's what best friends do. I got to remember that. Franklin never thought about making new friends until a new family moved down the lane. So we see a family moving in, okay? And he never thought of making new friends. So do you really think he wants to make friends with these people at this time or not yet? Not yet, because he has all the friends he needs. He's thinking, I have all the friends. I have my hide-and-seek friend. I have my bear best friend. I don't need more friends. So he's not thinking about that yet. Hmm, good, good. So now I'm looking at the picture again. I see bears moving in. And if I see bears moving in, that means it must be big, heavy furniture, right? Because if, it was, if they didn't need big, heavy furniture, maybe they'd have mice moving in, right? Or somebody else, but they got big bears. And they're moving into a house. And, you know, there's Franklin. He's riding his bike, and he's like, oh, my gosh. What's going on here? So I know Franklin is very curious. That's telling me he's a curious guy. So let's see what it says. Let's see if Dr. Lopez was kind of right putting things together. And look how tiny Franklin looks, right? Look how he's like really small, and that's like this humongous bed, right? So it's like giants moving in or something. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Franklin was curious about the newcomers. He rubbed his eyes as the movers unloaded the furniture. The beds were made for giants. Oh, I guess I was right. And the lamps were as tall as trees. When Franklin saw the family, he was speechless. Oh my gosh. So if these are bears movers and they're that big, what could be that big? Do you think it's a giraffe? What do you think? I don't want your answer. I just want you to think. This is how we think. We think, okay, what's that big? Is it giraffe? Elephants? Maybe it's elephants. Maybe it's whales. Nah, it can't be whales. There's no water, right? So maybe, yeah, but the turtle's out of water too. That's a good point. So we got to use our imagination. Let's see. I'm curious. Look what it is. It's a moose, right? And so, sorry, my cell phone went off. I'll turn it off. Okay. I apologize. So we have, we have a moose there. And are they giants? No. no. Or yes. Who's seen a moose? Who has seen a moose? Yeah? They're big. They're huge. They might not be as huge as I thought because I was thinking elephants, giraffes, hippopotamuses. Who knows? But moose are pretty big too. So when he saw the new family, he was like, holy mackerel. This is what Franklin says. Franklin had never met a moose before. He had heard about moose. He had seen pictures of moose, but he had never actually known one. They were huge. Even the smallest moose was big. Franklin was so scared that he raced home. Sometimes big things scare us, right? You know, and I remember I was a new fam. I w when we were little and I moved, I was usually taller than everybody. You think I scared them? Yes? Well, thank you for that. Okay. You know, <laughs> you got scared too? It's always scary moving to a new place, right? But Franklin's scared of the new people. He raced home. How do you think they felt? I mean, can you imagine you go meet somebody and they jump on their bike and race away from you? Yeah, that would make me feel like, oh my gosh, do I belong here? That would actually hurt my feelings. So I'm looking at this picture, and Franklin looks all like, right, and, and he's talking to his mom. He looks like, oh, my gosh, something happened. Look, mom, I just met something. What could it be? Let me read it. A moose family moved in. That's nice, said Franklin's mother. Maybe you'll make a new friend. Franklin shook his head. I don't think so. I expect you to be nice when you meet somebody new, warned his mother. Franklin scowled. Well, I'm kind of disappointed in Franklin that he doesn't want to make new friends. I'm telling you, that's what I'm feeling right now. I kind of want to give Franklin a scolding that we shouldn't judge people, right? That's what I'm thinking. When I'm going through this book, I'm like, man, Franklin, why would you be like that? Why would you treat another moose that way, right? 
The next morning, the moose was in the classroom. The teacher says, please give a warm welcome to your new classmate. And the teacher's name is Mr. Owl. So we see all Franklin's friends that he's growing up with and the moose. And what does the moose look like? He looks sad, right? He looks like he doesn't want to be there. He, he's the one who looks scared. So when I'm looking at the picture, I'm feeling bad because I'm sure Franklin had a lot to do with that. He probably didn't realize that, but Franklin had a lot to do with that. Him not feeling welcome. Hello, Moose, said the class in unison. Can we do that here? Everybody, on the count of three, say, hello, Moose. One. Hello, moose. After three. <laughs> Everybody in the district. One, two, three. Hello, Moose. Well, that's what happened when the Moose walked in. But the moose just mumbled, hello, and looked at his feet. And he didn't look very friendly, whispered the beaver. So they're judging him, but he's not feeling welcome, right? He's not feeling like he's a friend. You know, I'm looking at this, and I see the moose with his head down, and I see Franklin there, and I'm wondering what's happening now. The moose still doesn't look happy. The moose doesn't look like, right, like he has friends. Wow. Mr. Al told the class that moose had come from a different place from far away. That can happen to any of us. Franklin, said Mr. Owl, I'd like you to be a buddy for Moose. Franklin tried to smile, but he was scared. Moose was so big. Wait a minute. I, I totally forgot what I read. What was that about? What happened? Oh, my gosh. Let me think. What should I do if I forgot what I read? I should reread this. I totally forgot what happened. I was daydreaming. I was thinking about the phone call that just came in. I was just like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot, you know? I, I, I was smelling dinner, and it's not even lunchtime yet for me. So I had my mind just wander. And anytime my mind wanders, do I just keep reading or do I reread? Always reread, right? Because I might miss an important part of the story. So I'm going to reread it again because I totally forgot what it said. Mr. Owl told the class that Moose had come from a different place far away. Oh, he's from far away. Oh, my goodness. Franklin said, Mr. Owl, I'd like you to be a buddy for Moose. Oh, so they're doing the buddy system when a new person comes in. I hope our schools are doing that too. Franklin tried to smile, but he was scared. Moose was so big. So Franklin, if I look here, he doesn't look like he's smiling. And, you know, if somebody buddied you up and they're like, that would make me feel bad. Would that make you feel bad? Oh, man, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to give Franklin a little lecture on what good friendship is like. Oh, my, I'm upset now. You know, you see, sometimes when you read books, you get upset You're, or you get scared because your characters get scared. Sometimes you get happy because the, the characters are happy. But right now I'm upset at Franklin. Why is he doing this to the moose? The moose didn't do anything, right? So now I'm looking here and they're going to go out to play and they're leaving moose inside the schoolhouse after he got buddied up. Oh, I, oh my goodness. That's not cool. That is not cool. Now I'm going to read this with anger. Moose didn't say a word all morning. At, resle at recess? At recess. How do I say it? At recess. Okay. At recess. See, sometimes you get your tongue twisted, right? You get your, you're like, oh my gosh. Oh, I get, the, 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 the. Is that okay to get your tongue twisted when you're reading? Yes, absolutely. At recess, Franklin ran outside with his friends, leaving Moose behind. But Mr. Owl reminded Franklin he was Moose's buddy. Do you want to play? Asked Franklin. Moose shook his head back and forth. Back and, was this back and forth? No. This is back and forth. Okay. This is up and down. This is back and forth. So if Moose said this, what is Moose saying? Moose is saying no. no. Okay. Moose is saying no. Franklin was relived? Relived, re, relie, relieved. Franklin was relieved. 
Franklin was relieved. You see, what I did right now is I had a I had problems with a few words here because I got tongue twisted, and then you know, I, I I didn't know if that was relived, but I know there's not a word relived, so I kept sounding it out out loud until it made a word that made sense, and it said relieved, and then I repeated that sentence three times, three times till it sounded right. So that way I got good practice. So in case it came again, so I said Franklin was relieved. Franklin was relieved. Franklin was relieved. See that? And what does relieved mean? Relieved means. Nah, I'm, you're calm. You're like, oh, we're all right on. You know? Right. So now Franklin, I mean, Franklin's not scoring points with me. Franklin was relieved. He was happy that the boot moose said no. I'm like, okay, all this time, remember when I talked to you ahead of time before we started recording? I said, Franklin is a good guy. From what I know, Franklin is, is a really good person. And all I'm reading is how he doesn't want to be friends with this person and he's treating them badly. And this poor moose just wants a friend. And Franklin isn't doing what he's being told even by the teacher. Man, I don't know how this book's going to go. But now I'm thinking, if I'm looking at the title, it says Franklin's New Friend. This is the only new person in the book. So somewhere, I'm hoping, because of the title, I'm going to make a connection. Friendship is going to happen. That's what I'm hoping. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, Franklin, I know I'm very upset at you. I'm very disappointed in you. But there has to be a part in this book that he's going to make a new friend because all of these are old friends. And that's what it's called, Franklin's new friend. So let me keep reading. I've got I to gotta find out what's happening. What's going to happen? So I'm looking here, and I see the moose. He's over by a tree, and he's all by himself, and he looks very lonely. That's what happens whenever people don't have friends. They go by themselves. And then I see him getting a soccer ball because he's so big, you know. Oh, man, let's see what happens. During recess, oh, I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking out loud in my mind, oh, recess, I love recess. How I love recess. During recess, moose, 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 moose stood alone as Franklin and his friends played soccer. Fox kicked the ball too hard and it flew into the tree. Wow, Fox must be a good kicker. Now, We'll have to get Mr. Owl, groaned the bear. You know, nobody likes to call the teacher to chase the ball, right? Because, you know, the teachers don't say, well, why did you kick it there, right? You know, you know how teachers get. I'm kidding, teachers. You do the right thing. I've got it, cried Moose. He knocked the ball out of the tree and sent it flying to Franklin. Wow. The Moose went up and knocked the ball out of the tree and sent it fly flying to Franklin. Wow. That was good, said Fox. I guess, shrugged Franklin. My goodness, the moose did something good, and Franklin is still being negative. Wow, come on, Franklin, let's get over this. When we go to the next page, see that? We have, back in the classroom, Mr. Owl asked Franklin and Moose to make a poster for the bake sale. I don't need any help, said Franklin. Wow. He doesn't even, I'm thinking, wow, you know, we all need help. It's more fun when you do things together, I think. I don't know. I don't understand Franklin right now. Mr. Owl talked to Franklin alone. Good for Mr. Owl. Good. That's what good teachers do. Try to imagine how Moose feels. He's new and he has no friends here. He's probably scared. Moose can't be scared, said Franklin. He's so big. Mr. Owl looked at Franklin. This is some good word of advice. This is a really good teacher. Maybe that's why he's an owl. Holy mackerel. Wait a minute. He's an owl. Owls are known as wise. Teachers are wise. Hello. That's why the owl's a teacher. There's a significant meaning with that bird being a teacher. Wise old owls, wise teachers. I get it. Oh my goodness, I made a good connection. I feel good about myself. Moose can't be scared, said Franklin. He's so big. Did you notice I lost my place? 
Is it okay to lose your place? Yeah. yeah, and you go back to the place you thought you were at. So I lost my place. Mr. Owl looked at Franklin, and he gave this word of advice. Big or little, we all get scared. That is so true. Wise owl, wise teachers, I get it. Franklin thought about that. That's true. Everybody gets scared. Everybody. So you could see the lecture happening. You could see Moose working on his own. Maybe, maybe that little lecture from that teacher is going to make all the difference. So now, they're working together. I see a different Franklin now. He looks happy, doesn't he? So does the moose. They both look happy. Oh, my goodness. I think we finally made a turn here. I can't wait to see what happened. Let me read. Let me read. Let me read. Franklin got the paints and the paper. Do you want to help me, moose? Oh, yes, said moose. I love to draw. They sat side by side and planned the poster together. Franklin realized that Moose didn't seem as big when he was sitting, right? When you're sitting down, you're not as big. You're not looking up. And, you know, Franklin was scared of his big height. Moose was scared of not having friends. They were both scared. Big or little, everybody gets scared. That's what the wise teacher said. Wow. Teachers are pretty smart. Well, let's look at that poster. That's a pretty extravagant poster we got there. Then we got this books over here, and we got this play set over here. Heck, I want to go to that school. That's what I'm thinking. That looks like a fun school. I don't see them star testing, right? <laughs> I know, that's funny. All right. Don't blame that on us. That's the state. Okay, guys. So, after much work, the poster was perfect. They both thought so. At library time, Franklin thought Moose Franklin thought, no, that's not Franklin thought. That's Franklin taught. You see, sometimes when you're reading, the words play tricks on you. What happens? You think you see a word, but it's a different word. So when I said Franklin thought, Franklin thought, moose, it's not Franklin thought moose. It's Franklin taught moose. Okay? So I'm going to replay it in my brain now. At library time, Franklin taught Moose how to borrow books. Wow, that's what the library is about, right? To borrow books and return them? I, th I got this from a library. I wonder what library I got this from. Wow, you guys are smart. So at library time, Franklin taught Moose how to borrow books. Great. So he's showing them how to use the library. Moose showed Franklin how to cut a perfect circle. That's hard, you know, to have what I, I can never cut a perfect circle. You know, I always have to, I always have like little edges. I, I can't do that. They both like to build structures. Oh, I see that. Franklin and Moose had a lot in common. That's, they found, they found like, they like the same stuff. That is cool. Oh my gosh. Now they're all together. That's the way it should be. I'm starting to get happy now. All right. At lunch, Franklin made sure that Bear and his other friends got to know his new buddy. So now Franklin's saying, hey, he's my buddy. I want everybody to know my buddy. Everybody's going to know Moose. And guess what? They like Moose. Besides, he was a very good soccer player. So now they got a, a teammate to help him play with soccer. They have a new buddy. This is the way it should be. I'm happy now. I'm happy. They had a lot in common. So Franklin's coming home, and he's going to tell his mom something. I wonder what he's going to tell his mom. I think he's going to be a little excited about his new friend. I'm just trying to predict. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to predict. And I want to know, is that cookie she's making? And are those bugs on the cookies? These look like, they look like there's bugs on the cookies. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's because they eat bugs. Hello. When Franklin got home from school, he was happy. Guess what, he told his mother. I have a new friend. So you met Moose, asked his mother. What's he like? Moose is big, said Franklin, but he's not mean or scary. Good, said his mother. Would you like to take some of these cookies to him? Okay, so you guys told me that turtles eat bugs. 
But do moose eat bugs? He's gonna take cookies with bugs and oh my gosh. I don't know. If my friend brought me bug filled cookies, I don't know how I would feel about that friendship. Would you still eat them if you saw bug filled cookies from a new friend? So I'm trying to think, okay, moose don't eat bugs. So they look like M&Ms. Maybe it'll trick them. So we'll see if Moose eats the bugs. Oh, my goodness. Moose is being a good friend. He's eating those cookies. Look at that. They're hanging out and having a good time. Franklin went to Moose's house. They ate all the cookies together. I'm glad you were my buddy, said Moose. I was worried that nobody would play with me. Really, said Franklin. He could barely remember being afraid of moose. From then on, Franklin and Moose played together all the time. Now Franklin's new friend was a special friend. The end. So we got a, we got a lot of important elements in this story, right? And I want you to know that I'm okay. I messed up on my story reading. That's okay. Because as a reader, you're going to mess up. I gave you some tips. On some of them, I had to kind of relook at the word and pronounce it over and over again till it made sense, right? And then I repeated it so that way when you repeat it, it gets in your brain and you remember it longer. On another issue, I saw a word that my brain said was another word. It wasn't the right word. It wasn't that I couldn't read it. It was just my brain was saying one thing and I... I said that thing, and it was the wrong thing. So I caught myself, and I went, and I reset it again to where it would get right to program my brain. At another time, I totally forgot. I totally forgot what I was reading. I read it again. At another time, my phone rang. I was distracted. I was distracted. Oh, my God, my phone's ringing. Should I answer the phone? I was tempted to answer the phone, guys. Because, you know, sometimes things happen, right? The phone rings, the TV's on. I wanted to answer my phone. Did I answer my phone? No, no I didn't. Why? Because I had to remain focused on the reading. It would have been very easy if I said, all right, hold on one second, got to answer this call. You know, because there's important stuff happening in the district. And, no, the book was more important. I was so into the book, I really didn't want to put it down. So there was different elements that I wanted to show you on how to stay focused on the book. Did you notice that I was getting emotional about the book? I was kind of getting angry at Franklin. I was kind of feeling what, what was going on with the moose. I was feeling bad. That's part of getting into the book. Did you notice I was trying to predict, all right, what's going to happen? I'm looking at the title. I know a friendship's going to happen. That's what you do when you engage with the book. Did you notice that when I was reading the book, I was looking at all the pictures and starting to make connections because most people wouldn't have picked up that Franklin's mom had bugs in those cookies and the moose was eating those bugs, right? But I looked at everything because that's what friendship sometimes does. You do things like that and you're like, well, I got a new friend. I guess I got to eat these bug-filled cookies. All of these things are going to help you be future leaders because leaders are readers. And remember... You're always going to struggle with reading because you're always going to have a harder book. And it's okay to make mistakes while you're reading aloud. Don't ever be embarrassed. Don't ever be embarrassed. Your superintendent made mistakes. He had distractions. He did all of these things. And I did this so if your superintendent isn't embarrassed, neither should you be. I'm very proud of this district because all of you are becoming the leaders and readers of all our Rio Grande Valley. You're going, to be, you're going to be reading more books than anybody else. And later on, when you're in college, I hope one day you teach your younger brothers and sisters, family members, just young kids, that reading is fun. It's more fun than watching a movie. It's more fun than playing video games because your imagination takes you wherever you want to go and I guarantee you, the more you read, the farther you'll go in life. So it was a very proud moment to, to uh, read to Cavazos Elementary. Third grade students, turn around to the camera. Let's zoom out so you can wave and say hi. Look at that. Aren't these students beautiful?
On the count of three, we say, thank you, mission. Keep reading to lead. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you, and have a good day.